I get to get back to work. Hey, shine like go. They don't want story, man. They want the sound bite. I'm like, no. Look around like they see you on the mountain, they don't see you on the climb. Right? Me and all of mine in the power line. Look at this and what you find. Right. Hi, my name is Josh. I'm the founder and master electrician here at Empowered Electric, and I just want to welcome you to Empowered ED. We're going to take a little deep dive at some of the tips and tricks that make electricians really, really great. Starting with electrical because Empowered Electric is funding this, but it might not stay there. I'm talking to you framers and plumbers and HVAC guys. We need your skill set too. It's a great time to be in construction, man. I, I always remember in fourth grade, I failed art class because I couldn't shade a sphere. Well, once you put a piece of conduit in my hand and a bender, it was like I was an, actually an artist. It's where skill and art and technical trades and passion all kind of collide. It is my absolute favorite thing to talk about. It's my favorite thing to do. And if you've been in the trade, you realize that some things come more natural than others. Some things make you come alive. Focus on those things. Those things are awesome. Don't focus on the stuff that sucks. Like right now, we're in a warehouse recording these guys. It is hot as hell. So I apologize if I sweat. If that offends you, probably not the channel to subscribe to or the career path to pursue. So right now we're gonna talk about a 30 degree offset. Why would I do an offset? Well, let's just say theoretically, I was gonna come out of this box, this knockout right here. And I wanted to come over and set another light at that elevation on this stud. Now, early on, I remember running pipe on a bar joist and just pulling it over. When you looked up, it was all just wiggle jiggled, okay? That's not the way you do it, you use a bender. So, you take your tape measure, you go from the center of the hole to the center of where you're gonna run the pipe. And so actually, it's not 15. Oh, this is gonna be fun. And when I say fun, I mean sucks. Um, it's about 14 and 7 eighths. So it's 14 and 7 eighths, which of course, if it was 15 inches, it would be an easy 30. 14, or 15 times two is 30. 14 and 7 eighths is a little bit harder. Maybe you use your calculator for that, but 14 times two is 28. 7 eighths times two is 14 eighths, which is one and six eighths, which is one and three quarters. So it's 29 and three quarters, okay? So, that's our distance between marks. So when you make an offset, we're gonna take our pipe and we're gonna make a first mark. Now, when you make a first mark, a lot of people you know, try to start it at the end of the conduit. I always go out two inches. So we made our first mark at two inches. Now, our distance between marks has to be 29 and three quarter. Okay, so that's where most people screw up is they'll make their first mark and then they'll come over here and make a mark at 29 and three quarters. Is that right? It's not right, it's wrong. You would be two inches off. So 29, 30, 31, and three quarters right here. If you don't know how to read a tape measure, please hit me up in the comments. I will make a video telling you how to read a tape measure. But, so we have a mark at two, we have a mark at 31 and three quarters. When in doubt, measure again because I didn't want to look like a doofus. Yep, 31 and three quarters. Now, I know some people are gonna make a comment and be like, oh my gosh, that moron. Reddit, you Reddit dudes are mean sometimes. Oh, that idiot made marks with Sharpie and that's gonna be exposed conduit. You shouldn't use Sharpie. Well, I'm gonna show you a trick a little later to get the Sharpie off, so don't worry about that, fellas. I'm gonna take my half inch bender, okay? And whenever I put in my half inch bender, and guys, forearm strength is important. You know how in a lot of makeup uh, videos I talked about using, eating with chopsticks to get your hand strength for Chinese food? Um, forearm strength is uh, really important. Um, I really don't know what to say. Do freaking reverse curls or something. When you line it up, look, you slide the conduit in. Okay, right? Ooh, I feel that it. it's still smooth. You see that arrow. That is where your first mark's gonna go. Now, um, another little trick, it doesn't actually matter where that arrow is, as long as it's the same. So you could line it up at the face of the mouth like that. And your next line, you would just line up at the face of the mouth. That's a little insider trick I learned. But for right now, we're just gonna go with the arrow, okay? So we line it up. And sometimes, guys, just being honest, whenever you're kind of controlling conduit like this, it can slip out. So if you wanna put your foot here, it kind of helps it to go wherever. Now, if you zoom in on the bender, you see all these different marks, right? So we've got 10 degree, 
22, 30, 45, and 60. Don't use 60, 60 sucks. 45, we're gonna cover with three quarter inch conduit. We're talking about 30 degrees right here. So you get your mark lined up, you grab your conduit, keep your foot there so it doesn't slip out. And all you do is you kind of just push on the conduit until it comes in parallel. The bottom of the conduit comes parallel with that 30 degree mark. See that? Sometimes people push a little bit much, half inch conduit, don't worry about it so much. So then you pop it up, push it in to where your next line's gonna be. Where's that next line? Sometimes you lose it. Ooh, it's right there. Push it all the way in there. You line it up with that line. Now, look at this piece of pipe. An offset, it goes up and then it curves down. So when your first bend, see how the conduit is? My first bend was like this, I bent it. You rotate the pipe 180 degrees. If you do not rotate it 180 degrees, it will go up and kind of curve at an angle. It's called a dog leg. I'll, I'll try to show you. I'm not gonna do it right now because I want you to see it nice. But you rotate it 180 degrees, you line it up with the arrow. I lean back, I look straight down the pipe. Dude, you should totally come here and look straight down the pipe. That'd be dope. So you, you, you come here and you look straight down the pipe. See, so if, the, if it's not 180 degrees, it's gonna look like this. Or if it's too much, it's gonna look like this. You wanna rotate it right at 180 degrees so it doesn't dog leg. Once it's lined up, what do you do? You bend it. You hold it in place, you come down till it hits that 30. Right there, boom. So it's bent, it goes up and it comes down. It goes up, it comes down. Let's see here. So, when I put it up here, let me get a connector. So I got my connector on there. I'm gonna slide my pipe in. Now look at this. So when we look at that, we can tell that it's not completely bent right. That means that my bends were a little under. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit. When you tweak the conduit though, do you just throw it in there and bend? No, you wanna make sure that, that that arrow in that line is the same, otherwise the bend won't be completely good. Line it back up here again. And you know, guys, honestly, I might have missed the mark on that second one a little bit, but you can just tweak it a little bit. Boom, look at that. Coming out of the conduit straight, comes over 30 degree, 30 degree bend here, perfectly straight with that. Now, if I was going to put a box on, if I wanted it to be at the same elevation as this other box, I'm looking at 86 inches. I'm gonna make a line at 86 inches. And, guys, where am I gonna cut it? Am I gonna cut it at 86 inches? Am I gonna come right here and make a mark at 86 inches? I am. But if I'm putting a box, a four square box, not an octagon, not a, an 11B, but if I'm going to uh, cut it here and put a box on, I've got to subtract two inches. One of the fun things is I'm the worst speller ever, um, but I was always good at math. And just taking a couple seconds and thinking, you know, here's, so it's 18 and an eighth. So we're looking at 20, or sorry, 20 and a 16th right there. So, I'm gonna cut this and get it out of here. Come here, put, put it here, let the saw do the work. Might have to find a different place to put that ream room. I'm having to like cross draw. If this was a freaking Western, I'd be dead. Clint Eastwood got me. Quick in the Dead, Sharon Stone, Leonardo DiCaprio, what's up? Don't act like you ain't never seen that movie. Um, so, pop that in there. It's gonna go right there. Box is gonna go up top. Now, one thing that I wanted to do is make a little mark here. Because when you're running conduit, you have to have a strap 
within three foot of the box, wherever structurally sound. If you use an un unbroken stick of pipe, you can go up to five inches where it's not structurally feasible, but three foot from a box is very, it's, it's usually doable, okay? To be honest, I don't know if this is three foot from this box, but I'd probably get away with it since I'm putting this here. So I'm gonna come over here. Might have to freaking speed this up a little bit. So guys, there you have it. But we have a two inch, we started two inches off the edge of the conduit. Imagine if that was just down a little bit more, it'd look a little funky. Some people use six inches, some people use one foot. I think whatever you do, just be consistent. Consistency looks professional. When somebody looks at something, you want them to think that looks professional. So we made a mark two inches up, bent our 30 degree offset. Remember, whenever we bent our next uh, offset, our, um, sorry, our next 30 degree bend, we flipped the conduit 180 degrees. We then bent it back, just put a strap, cut it the length of the, uh, to put the box up at the, the right elevation. But one thing that I know a lot of people were gonna hate on, there's two things I thought of. Number one, when you look at that, it doesn't look professional because there is a Sharpie mark. Little trick, okay? If you mark with a Sharpie, take the Sharpie back out, mark over it a couple times, and then rub. Look at that. Mark it. Uh, it's something about the acid in the in the sharpie burns it off now you don't see the mark anymore right the second thing so you can do that on a box you can do that on conduit um, the longer you let it set the harder but that took it right off the second thing I remembered remember I said on EMT conduit when running from a box you need to have a strap within three foot of the box so of course this one right here is three and a half inches that's plenty here you can see the strap is definitely within three foot but is this within three foot from this box now if not structurally feasible you can run that strap up to five foot away from the box if it's unbroken what that means is there's no cut with the coupling if there was a coupling here this would not be allowed but check this out if i put this tape measure here and i even allow for the bends Okay, you can't see it, I'm gonna have to show you. Gosh dang it, this is unbelievable. I'm holding my thumb on it, okay? This ain't no David Blaine sleight of hand. What does that number say? What does it say, Brett? Can you see it? 36 inches, baby, three freaking foot. That strap is three foot from that box. So guys, there you have it, man. The, the conduit looks good. It looks professional with no Sharpie marks. It's code compliant. I mean, it's, I love it. I love bending conduit. I know that a 30 degree offset is something very, very simple. Guys, you're gonna do this a lot, okay? You could do that a bunch of times in just one run. But I love it, I hope you love it. I hope you're enjoying this channel. If so, man, please be sure to subscribe. Hit that like button, share it. I love the conversations going on. In case you guys don't know, I am the guy that's commenting back. So if you have a question or you have a critique or you have a, hey, this actually worked great for me, please comment below, it means a ton. I will uh, reach out to you. Guys, I hope that helps. Um, keep bending conduit, keep being artistic. If you're in the Kansas City area and you wanna hit us up for either work or employment, 816-500-9452, that is my number. Have a great week, guys, bye-bye.